Wow, what a crazy July and August. I helped film a movie, I was a counselor at a summer camp, and I still found time to try and save the girl. I never did figure out which castle their princess was in, though. Well, I'm back, and there's work to be done in the funny pages. There are unknown gems that need to be praised and made known. There are soulless cellars that need to be exercised and burned. You guys ready? Let's get started. Hello and welcome back to the Punchline. I'm your comic strip critic and thank you everyone for sticking with me through my hiatus. I'm actually coming back with more subscribers than I had when I left. You guys, you guys are awesome, you know that? Um... There was something else I wanted to talk about. Um, oh, <laughs> right. Uh, comic strips. Those of you who have been watching this series since the beginning will remember that my very first review focused on Baby Blues, which I still wish my newspaper would bring back. That strip is written by Jerry Scott. So why am I bringing up that old review again after all this time? Well, it turns out that Jerry Scott is something of a superstar in the comics industry. He's one of just four cartoonists in history to have two different comic strips running daily in over a thousand different newspapers at the same time. And while Baby Blues focuses on the antics of raising a modern day family with both parents and children, his other strip is much, much different. Instead, that strip focuses on the antics of raising a modern day family that includes both parents and children. We're looking at zits today. Ew! No, not those zits. Yeah, okay, that's much, much better. You probably already know this strip pretty well. It appears in 1,600 newspapers in 45 different countries and 15 different languages, and it has an estimated fan base of how big? <coughs> Holy crap! Well, I guess since all you guys out there already know and read and love this strip, there's no point in my reviewing it. So, I'll see you next week. Bye! Whoa, okay. Okay, okay. I'll review it. Um, who are you people with the guns? And, uh, why do you care about my show so much? And, and how do you keep breaking into my home? Anyways, Zitz is about the Duncan family. Our main protagonist is 16-year-old Jeremy, a high school sophomore who seems like your typical teenager. He struggles through school, plays guitar in a rock band with his friends, sees his girlfriend, eats more than usually thought possible, is glued to technology, and... Well, there's no single word to describe the relationship he has with his parents. If Jeremy is your stereotypical teenager, then Walt and Connie are just as much the stereotypical parents of a teenager. Walt's an orthodontist who deals with Jeremy's antics in as much stride as he can manage, while Connie's a stay-at-home mom that Jeremy seems to drive off the deep end as though it's his job. Well, you know what? I liked Jerry Scott's work showing a family raising an infant in the year 1990. Can he bring that same level of wit and intelligence to the world of raising a teenager in 2012? Well, let's take a look at this year's zits and find out. I apologize for how disgusting that sounds. First strip we're looking at, and I'm already enjoying this for several reasons. The artwork is stylish and clear and fun, and sort of showcases the characters' personalities at a glance, like good character design should. Jeremy is a loud, tech-loving, chair-sprawling, unkempt teen, and his parents are much more old-fashioned and straight-laced in comparison. Take a look at their color schemes. Jeremy is wearing a bright purple plaid shirt. Walt and Connie, black and white. This joke also seems like something that could actually happen in real life, which is a big component to the feel of Zitz. Take this strip, for example. I actually had something similar to this happen to me, although I was in college, not high school, but Jeremy's situation is still instantly relatable and identifiable. This is a major strength of Zitz. This is why so many people cut the strip out of their newspapers and stick it up on the refrigerator. 
They can see their own lives in it, even if it has been exaggerated, cartoonized, and, well, funnied up a bit for comedy's sake. These little truisms here capture and reflect our own lives and the current dynamic between teenagers and their parents. Food service is a wonderful introduction to the working world. Somebody will have to ask what she's been saying all these years. The whole idea of a teenager not hearing his parent because of headphones is not a new idea to comedy or even the funny pages at all, but the utter indifference Jeremy shows here, along with his one-liner, is what keeps the idea fresh and funny in this case. What do you think, Jeremy? Would this be alright to wear? Sure, why not? It's not like anybody's gonna look at you or anything. The cure for high self-esteem is adolescence. Again, the reason this is so brilliant is that Jeremy manages to insult and dismiss his dad so casually and flawlessly. Look at his face. That took no effort at all from him. Walt's look of shock and, and resigned weariness in the last two panels is just fantastic artwork. Jim Borgman's art here is fantastic. Actually, um... Whoops, I forgot to talk about the artist earlier. Uh, my bad. Jim Borgman does the artwork for Zitz, and his artwork is stellar. I've already talked a lot about how the writing makes Zitz really funny, and Mr. Borgman pitches in and helps out a lot with that, too. He probably draws a lot of inspiration from his life, since according to his biography on DailyInk.com, the man is raising five teenagers. Holy crap, somebody give that man a medal! You know, while Jim Borgman's help writing Zitz undoubtedly helps out his quality a ton, it's his artwork that really takes Zitz and pushes it up to the next level. Look at this one, for example. I like how the dialogue in the first two panels is being told entirely through visual pictures, yet you can still tell exactly what's being said. And the way Jeremy's being shown in the final panel all sliced up is really, really clever. The fact that Scott and Borgman make the writing complement the visuals so well is sheer comic strip bliss for me. Okay, I know I managed to read out loud crazy looking dialogue back in my Pearls Before Swine review, but don't you dare ask me to try and read what Connie's saying there. But you know what? As awesome as the second panel is, what I like even more is seeing Jeremy and Walt in the third panel sharing a moment with each other. These aren't one-dimensional characters that have one-dimensional relationships with each other. They're much more complex than that. Okay, now I was planning on only showing you strips from 2012 and just looking at sits this year alone, but I found one strip from late 2011 that was so good that I'm just going to kind of break that unspoken rule and show it to you anyway. We have snack organized by priority, dominoes on speed dial, and Monday night football in HD on the flat screen. True, but let's not forget the most important thing. That I got mom to schedule a genealogy session with her brother tonight? <laughs> I drink to your Jedi powers, dad. This, it's, it's just, it's awesome. This is a really human moment, one that shows how parents and teenagers still bond together and are a family, despite all the differences and arguments that can happen between them. It, it's funny and it's heartwarming at the same time, and it still seems like something that could happen from real life. This right here, more than any other reason, is why I think Zitz works so well. Sure, you can get plenty of laughs from the clashing personalities of a teenage boy and his out-of-touch parents, but the relationships between everyone, Jeremy, his parents, his friends, his girlfriend, are all complex and varied enough that they don't get boring. They fight, they bicker, they laugh and love and live with each other. Their relationships are multi-layered and complex and they do different things all the time, just like in real life. And while the strip can ground itself in reality, albeit a very stylized reality, it's not afraid to just break the bounds of physics and just have some fun too. Like this one. If you can pull this off in real life, send me a picture so I can laugh at your misery. Also, um, am I the only one who thinks that this might be a very, very subtle reference to Calvin and Hobbes? Again, also, if Pierce posts the video of that crash to YouTube, it will go viral overnight, and you know it would. 
Likewise, if you can pull off any of these tricks with coat hangers, then take a picture or video and share it on Facebook or Twitter with me. Seriously, if you can actually do it and prove that you didn't stage it, I'll share it with everybody. Just, you know, skip the psychological warfare one, please. No points for that one. Actually, I don't know if sticking the giant metal wire into your cell phone is all that good of an idea. Would it even work? You know what? Let's test it. Um, I'm your comic strip critic, and I read the funny pages in the hope that someday they will be. And, um, I also hope that, uh, that this works here. Nope, nope, doesn't work.